what is going on guys welcome to the video i'm fabio and on this channel i talk about web development and programming so if that is something you're interested in definitely subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon down below as well so you get notified when i post new videos in today's video we're going to talk about css custom properties also called css variables which are variables that contain values that can be used throughout your document they're really really useful if you've got a lot of repeated values so let's get started all right guys so here we are inside visual studio code as usual and i've already created the index.html the main.css file i'm going to link the css so css main css perfect so we've got the style sheet linked and now let's start writing a few things so i'm going to write a container with class container and also class one and inside of that a paragraph with some random text then and here another div with the same class but two and inside the same thing okay Perfect, so we've got everything we need for this tutorial. So let's save that. We've got this, nothing really incredible. But now let's get to the CSS. So let's start without variables, without custom properties. So we'll do something like container, padding, 40 pixels, then we go down here, one, background color, RGB, 40, 40, 24, color I've chosen, div one, paragraph, color, light blue, then two, Background color, light blue, and div to paragraph color. Actually, the same here, so I'm copying and pasting that. All right, so we got something like this, right? So, this is how you would do things. But what about if you wanted to change this color? So this color, let's say you've got a lot of divs, a lot of things going on, and you wanted to change the color. So you would have to change the color here, to change the color here, and then to change the color here, and to change the color here, right? Let's now have a look at the CSS variables. So I'm just going to comment that out. Okay, so first of all, CSS variable starts with a double hyphen and you can use the name you want actually. And be careful because they're case sensitive. So make sure you use the right uppercase and lowercase letters, etc., etc. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm using the pseudo class root. And whenever you set a variable inside the root pseudo class, automatically that variable is available throughout the whole document, okay? So you can use them for every element, etc., etc. So let's do something like primary color and copy. I'm going to copy this like that. And then secondary color. And I'm going to use light blue. Okay, so then I can do the same thing. Actually, I'm going to copy this, like that. And instead of this sort of hard-coded color, I'm going to use the variables. So I'm going to use the function var, and then inside primary color. Then down here, instead of light blue, I'm going to use 
the secondary color. And here the same, the secondary color. And here to use the primary color. So let's get rid of this. Okay. So if I save that, we get this. Okay. Because we don't have the container. So I'm going to do that here. Okay. So now that should work as before. Exactly. So this is how everything works. But let's say that now you want to change the color as above. You don't have to go here, change the color, go here, change the color, and so for every element that uses that specific color. You can just change the variable. So let's copy those and comment those out and see. Let's say we want to use another value. So 37, 81, 18. And as you can see, you've got that. And here as well. And here, let's try another color. So let's do four, three. Save. As you can see, you got this color is the same as this color. This color is the same as this color. So we just changed the color here. And automatically, all the colors, all the elements that used the var function with the property, with the custom property, changed color. So this is really, really powerful because you don't have to, let's say you've got 100 elements with the same color, all you know, nested one into the other, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and you would have to go element by element and change the color one by one. In this case, you can just change the color on one place and automatically you've got the color here. But let's say that for some reason you don't have the variable. So the variable doesn't exist. So let's say something like that. So if we save, we don't get anything. So you can always set a fallback value that the browser can use whenever you don't have an actual variable set. Okay, so let's say red. So in this case, you don't have the variable here. So the browser is using red, the fallback value. But let's say that you've got the variable and you save. As you can see, it uses the variable. So if the variable is present, then the browser uses the value of the variable. But if it's not present, it's gonna use the fallback value. Easy, right? Variables can actually be used with JavaScript, you can change the value, etc. I'm gonna make a video about how to change the themes, how to change the, the website themes with CSS variables and JavaScript. So stay tuned for that because that's gonna be real, real fun. Okay. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that you can set a variable inside an element. So instead of setting it in the root pseudo class, you could set it, let's say here, okay? You can set like primary color, etc., etc., And that variable can only be used by the one itself, of course, and the children of one, of the class one, okay? So for example, you couldn't use this variable here. So let's try that. If I do something like, secondary, copy and paste it here. As you can see, it's still used here, this light sort of green, but it's not used here. Why? Because now it's just the scope of the variable is only the all the elements with the one class. Okay, so that is not accessible by two. Okay. So this is something that I want to mention. Actually, um, I always use, I nearly always use the root element. I always sort of set my variables here so I can access them throughout my document without worrying about, is this variable in here? Can, can I use it here, et cetera, et cetera. 
I think that there are use cases where you want to set the variable only inside a specific element and then use it inside of the element only. Okay, maybe you've got a project with loads and loads of variables and you don't want to have all jammed up in the root pseudo class and you want to sort of spread them. You can do that if you want. So that's an option and I wanted to mention it. So I think we are done for today. I'm going to close everything down as usual and that's it. All right, guys. So I hope that you now have a better understanding of CSS custom properties or variables and that you can use them effectively. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.